Have you ever wondered if you can take scrap jewelry, put it in a cupel, and get the gold from it? Well, on this video, we're about to do just that. So stay tuned. What we've got in front of us here in this cup is 61.4 grams of mixed carat gold scrap jewelry, watches, things like that. Uh, Mr. Minix actually sent me a bunch of that, as well as uh, some purchases that I've been uh, like, you know, basically saving up for this video. So, we also have some lead, actually. I forgot to mention that as well. We'll use this, and we'll talk about how this is all gonna go We've down. got all the junk separated here, the clasps, uh, which have springs in them. They're in here as well. They do contain some gold, the, the clasps. But uh, most of the junk's in here. We've got the 61.4 grams of scrap in here, and I'm gonna make a little burrito. Gold, burrito, gold and lead burrito. So I'm gonna fold that up into a little packet and then all this lead total weight's 101 grams as well, just in case you needed to know. All right, let's make this golden burrito. More like a chalupa or a, or a Mexican pizza, the shape here. lot of material all right this is gonna go in the cupel all right we've got the furnace going I compacted this a little bit with the hammer and we're gonna let this work away there we go and we'll catch up with you once we get it in a puddle All right, so we've got this in here now, and what we're gonna do is melt this lead with all this gold and other base metals inside. The lead is gonna oxidize off and get absorbed by the cupel inside this furnace, and hopefully pull all that copper and brass and nickel and all that other nasty stuff out of there, leaving behind a bead of gold and maybe some silver. Uh, once that occurs, we will take it out. There won't be any lead left, and we're gonna chemically refine that bead to get it to 24k so it'll take a little while to melt this thing and we'll catch up with you then. all right let's see if this is starting to melt already oh yeah we've got some melting action going on in there so it looks good we're gonna let it work for probably about an hour before we check on it again Maybe a half hour. We'll see you then. We're going to add a couple of pieces of lead on top of everything. Here we go. One more. Now that little drip might have looked like the lead overfilled in the cupel, but it actually melted off the side of the cupel, so there wasn't anything lost. That's quite all right. It's been a while. Let's check on it. Should be pretty close to being, you know, about halfway done, I would hope. I've never done this much lead, I don't think. There is not a whole heck of a lot of lead left. But there is definitely still a puddle of lead. And it's probably near impossible to see with my camera work, but we're going to have to keep letting this go.
Looking really good. Still shedding off some lead and some junk. And let her keep cooking. Yep, we're done. And that jump right there is our metal, maybe. Because there ain't nothing at the bottom. Nothing at all. So we'll have to let that cool off and check it in the morning. That is the result of our QPEL last night. Nothing. However, I think we had a cupellation failure. I haven't seen them crack that bad. This was really, really swollen right here. And then I come down here and look and there's a big old puddle underneath where this cupel was sitting and this. That should be in the cupel along with that and that. There's probably some more down in this little hole that I've been digging at. So, total Q-Pail failure. Uh, it was working. It was doing its job. But we just basically cooked it too long in the oven. Got it too hot for too long. That's my assumption anyways. So, I need to figure out something else to do with this. You're going to have to stay tuned for the next video to find out what.